Today, I'm going to tell you exactly why you're slicing your driver, but better yet, I'm going to help you fix it. I'm PGA teaching professional Todd Cope, and I could fill almost every single one of my days helping people fix the slice. And the problem is, is that a lot of people just have not gotten good information. And today we're taking a deep dive into that. This is a deep dive into why you're actually slicing the driver. We're going to talk about the reasons of that. I'm going to give you three keys to fix it. All right. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a bonus drill to help you actually add some speed to those drives now that you're not slicing it anymore. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to leave a comment or a question because I do answer all of those and I love hearing from you. Even if you don't agree with me, that's okay. You won't be the first person who hasn't agreed with me and I love the dialogue and the back and forth. So let's dive into this. First of all, let's talk about what causes the slice, the, the reason, all right, like what's actually happening. All right, and then I want to talk also about, I want you to ask yourself this question, think about this. Are you the type of golfer who probably hits good iron shots that are pretty relatively straight, but the minute you grab your driver, you slice it? Well, there's a specific reason to that, and we're going to talk about that. So first of all, the slice. What causes the slice? Now, I'm going to do kind of a relatively quick summary of this. If you want more details on the real science behind it, I've already done a couple of videos on those. Be sure to check those out. But basically, here's what we've got. We've got two things in place here. We've got what we call a path and what we've got called a face. And when those two, the path, just think of the path as like the direction that you're swinging the golf club. I can swing it to the right, I can swing it at the target, or I can swing it to the left. And then of course we have a club face. The face could be pointed to the right, it could be pointed at the target, or it could be pointed to the left of the target. Now, what's important here is the combination of the two. In its most basic form, what you want is you want the path, I'm a right-handed golfer, I want the path to be to the right of the target. So let's say I want it to be four degrees to the right for sake of discussion. If my club face, I'm gonna put four dash R, meaning it's to the right of it. If my club face is anywhere from, I'm gonna put S for square, or even if it's one degree, two degrees, or three degrees to the right, I'm going to hit a nice high draw. All right? Now, what most people are doing when they slice a golf ball is the path is going to the left. Now, how much to the left? It could vary based on the golfer. But typically, most golfers that I see, not every single one, but most of them are swinging the club to the left. So what I want you to take away from just this little description here is in order to draw the golf ball with the driver, we're going to talk about in a second why that's more difficult with the driver versus with an iron, but we've got to get swinging the club to the right of the target if you're a right-handed golfer. Otherwise, it's very, very difficult, if almost impossible, to hit a nice high draw. Now, that's kind of the reason of what I'm going to call the slice. Now, let's talk about the driver, all right, versus the irons. Now, why is it more difficult to draw a driver versus an iron? You want to listen to this because this, I, I guarantee you, I'm not going to say you've never heard it before, but I bet 90% of you out there have never heard this before. So here's what we know. Well, let me ask you this before we dive into it. In order to hit a driver as far as possible, what's one of the things that we need to be able to do to maximize our distance based on our club head speed? If you've done any club fitting at all, or you've ever taken a golf lesson, what do they want you to do? They want you to hit up on the ball. When we hit up on the ball with the driver, because the ball's on a tee, when we hit up on it, okay, that decreases spin and helps increase launch, basically helps, us, helps the golf ball travel farther, all right? With an iron, what do we want to do with an iron? With an iron, we want a descending blow. So with the irons, I want the club at impact to be traveling down. With an iron, I want it to be, excuse me, with a driver, I want it going up. With an iron, I want the club going down at the moment of impact. So right there, this is, that is huge right there. If you only remember one thing from this video, I want you to remember this right here. Because, and why this is important, is because you could make the exact same swing. And if you come in contact with the exact same swing with an iron when the, when the club is traveling down, you're going to produce one type of ball flight. The exact same swing 
come in contact with the ball when the club is traveling up is going to be completely different. Now why is that? Here's the secret. Because when the club is traveling down, basically all things being equal, assuming a right-handed golfer, it's traveling to the right. When the club starts to travel back up the circle, think of the hula hoop, when it starts traveling back up the circle, where does it go? It goes to the left. All right, now some of my golf instructors out there, they might, you know, I know that's very basic in broad terms and there's some other details in there, but this isn't for the golf instructors. This is for you, the amateur golfer who wants to figure out why am I slicing my driver, okay? So here's what you want to know. Number one is, is that in order to draw the golf ball with my driver, I've got to be swinging it to the right, generally speaking. But if they also want me hitting up on it, and when I hit up on it, that causes the club to go to the left, I've got two things that are fighting each other. I'm trying to swing to the right, but I'm trying to hit up on it, and that's also causing the club to go to the left. So how am I going to navigate that? Well, we're going to show you that right now with these three keys. These three keys are going to help navigate that, allow you to still swing up so you maximize your distance, but also help you swing to the right. All right, so let's talk about that. So hopefully, I don't know if you agree with that or disagree with anything I've said so far. It's a pretty deep dive right there, but leave a comment. I, you know, maybe you learned something that I don't know and we can share from each other a little bit there. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, so aim. So here's the simplest thing that you can do to help you start drawing your driver. Think of the hula hoop. All right, if I take that hula hoop and I just simply aim it to the right, what happens? Well, the club is going to naturally start swinging more to the right. If I don't even change my golf swing, all I do is I take my feet and my body and I aim them slightly to the right. What I have done in essence is I've moved my golf swing, I've moved my circle more to the right. And we already know that if I want to draw the golf ball, I've got to be swinging a little bit to the right. So that would be key number one. I'm not saying it's impossible. But I'm saying it's very, very difficult to hit a nice high draw if you're a right-handed golfer and not aiming slightly to the right. Okay, because of what we just talked about. Because when the club starts traveling up, it starts traveling left. So I've got to bend that circle slightly to the right. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm not talking about aiming 40 yards to the right. Okay, because some people are like, well, you no, no, we're not saying that. What I'm saying is 10 yards. 15 yards, I mean, you know, a little bit. Just give me a little bit of rightward aim. All right, so that's tip number one. I'm going to aim slightly to the right. That's going to help. Number two, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to give it a little bit of a tilt, specifically in your spine. Think of like the zippers on your shirt. I'm going to tilt those back and away from the target a little bit. Now that's going to do two things for me. Number one, it's going to help me hit up on it. We already know that's good. Hitting up gives me more, okay, more launch, less spin, more distance. But it's also going to help swing that arc a little bit to the right also. So I'm going to take my tilt and I'm just going to move it with my driver a little bit away from the target. And when I do that, that's going to help me also swing the club a little bit to the right. So those are the first two keys that we're going to do, aim and tilt. Now, the next one is more of a swing tip. And I wish I could give you some real big scientific reason why this works other than after 25 years of teaching golf you're going to just have to trust me. It just works, all right? And that is that when you finish your swing, I want you to have a nice high handle, all right? So I want the handle to be nice and high and up. And I also like to see it a little bit to the right. So when you finish your swing, the handle is going to be nice and high and it's going to be up and to the right. Now, why is that going to help? because in essence it's going to move that arc, it's going to move your swing, tilt it slightly to the right because your hands are working high and to the right and it's going to help you hit that nice high draw. So if we aim to the right a little bit, if we get a little bit of tilt, and if when we finish our swings the handle's nice and high, all of those things are going to help us swing up and negate some of this leftward movement by swinging up and it's going to help you hit a nice high draw. Now once you're hitting the nice high draw, we might as well hit it more down the fairway, right? Hit it further down the fairway. So how can we do that? Well, this is one of my favorite drills to do right here. I like to call it the transfer drill because transferring energy into the back of the ball is a key component to adding more speed, adding more distance. So what you're going to do, pretty simple, you're going you're to tee the ball up, you're going to get set in there, all right? Now, 
Real quick, I hadn't even planned on talking about this, but I'm going to add it in here because we're diving deep. Ball position, we haven't even talked about that a little bit. And that's a key thing right there. I hadn't planned on talking about this. My video edit guy is probably going to be driving him crazy right now with this, but we're going to add it in here because it's important. Ball position should be basically off the inside of your lead foot. Okay, so like the inside of your lead heel, inside of your kind of the, the left toe. If you're a right hand golfer, get the ball forward a little bit. All right, now transfer drill. So you're set in there. What you're going to do is you get set up. You're going to take your lead foot, bring it back to your trail foot. So for me as a right-handed golfer, I'm going to bring my left foot back to my right foot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a back swing. And as I start my downswing, I'm going to step forward, hopefully, stepping back into that same position that the lead foot initially started in. And of course, I'm going to make contact with the golf ball. So set up. Bring my lead foot back, make a back swing, and as I step forward, replace the foot in the same spot. And what you're going to see, you're going to see a nice transfer of energy back into the golf ball. So if you're t the reason is, is that if you're tired of slicing the golf ball, there's a reason for it. All right, there's a reason for it. You can make the same golf swing with an iron as you do with the driver, and you can hit two completely different golf shots. Why? You know now because with an iron you're hitting down. When you're hitting down, that causes the club to go to the right if you're a right-handed golfer. With a driver, when you're hitting up, it causes the club to go to the left. Very difficult to hit a nice high draw that finishes at the target by swinging to the left. What can we do? We can aim to the right. We can tilt the shoulders a little bit. We can have a high handle. We can transfer some energy. And if we do those key concepts, we can now hit a nice high draw with some more speed and it's going to help you enjoy this wonderful game a little bit more.